10,000 years ago, Hoth Peninsula was in fact an island. And in many ways, Hoth is still considered an island. When you cross the Isthmus, you are entering a place full of magic and lore and history. The antiquarians took an interest in Hoth and began etching and sketching and painting its views, its scenery and its beauty. There were no cameras, so there were schools to teach people how to draw, how to sketch, and it became a popular pastime. This film shows you some of the etchings and paintings gathered over the years. The first evidence of occupation was around 10,000 years ago in Sutton, along by the Strand there, where kitchen middens were found. And then, around 5,000 years ago, we have the Crumlock, or the Aileen's Grave. These were pre-Celtic people. The first Celts arrived shortly before the time of Christ, and we have King Griffin, who was the first Milesian King of Leinster, and later High King of Ireland, and he ruled from Missouri in Hoth. After the conversion of Ireland, we became quite a religious people in Hoth and set up monasteries and oratories, and we became known as the island of saints and scholars. This was to change. The Danes came and invaded us and took our gold and the valuable items gathered. And shortly afterwards, in 1177, the Normans came and the St. Lawrence family have been ensconced in their castle since then. Sadly, the family have now vacated the castle. The sketch here by William Sadler is not very accurate, but very atmospheric. Some of these drawings are to a very good scale and very competent. The walls there, the gables, seem to be leaning into each other a little. And I think the building is foreshortened there. Again, it's been taken from different angles. That's looking northeast. This shows the boathouse right beside the old harbour. This shows the harbour with a ship in place. The X there marks out the college or the chapter house. You can see St. Mary's Abbey in the background. Beyond that, you see the Martello Tower. Gabriel Berlinger was a very good artist and very accurate. Watercolours. Some of the old Photographs were hand-painted and became postcards. Tourists would buy these and tell people where they were and what they saw. A very popular place to visit was, of course, Hoth Harbour. It was built in 1817. This is an early sketch. Captain Collins's map spelt Hoth quite differently than today. Dublin City in 1913 The bus was rich and the poor were slaves The women were... Reverend John Sherman referred to the town of Hoth as Beelingstown. He was an important official at the castle and was probably worthy of some recognition but not to call the town after him. In the month of August, the bossman told us no union man for him could work. We stood by Larkin and told This shows the excavation of what became Balscadden Road, forming a link from the quarries to the harbour. This is at the top of Main Street, looking down, and the X shows the Abbey. Again, the Abbey is e easily seen there. The gentleman arriving was Mr. Gross. He survived 12 days and died. He was an antiquarian and had a great collection. From Balsgarden, there were great views over the harbour and its fleet. Quite a few large vessels there. Kilrock quarries again looking down towards the harbour from a distance. It's a very popular walk and even in inclement weather, families walking along often get splashed by the tide lashing over the wall. There is a track going down the harbour 
that may have been to bring fish to the trains to bring to town. Some lovely photographs here, very atmospheric skies and full marks to the photographer. He did a wonderful job. This would have been a black and white photograph, hand painted. Again, this was a postcard and it shows the Martello Tower in the background. The little boy is wearing an Edwardian jacket. The fishing fleet look a little sad in some ways. That boat to the right is not in good condition and Lawrence Hotel is in the background. Now the train and the tram seen here side by side brought people to Hoth, brought the visitors. The train does today. That's now Aqua Restaurant, a very fine restaurant it is too. Hoth is a lovely harbour. In more recent times, a facility was built for private personnel for yachts and is worldwide famous. This is from the distance from the East Mountain looking towards the village. This would be facing down towards the village where the boarding now is located. Some of the thatch cottages in the village and Martello Tower can be seen to the right. This most likely was where the Haggard was. And again, coming down towards the village, down towards Main Street. The college or the chapter house is to the left with some fishman's cottages to the right. The X marks the spot of the future Catholic Church. There it is, partially completed. Hatch cottages at the top of Main Street and the photographer, Lawrence, collected a few people to enrich the photograph. This is on Dunbo Hill, looking downwards and that's the future Garda station to the right. The stone walling here was removed at the time the church was built. This is the steep corner at the end of Balglass Road where it zigzags into the village and those fields are now lapping down right into the village. They're all developed now. Lawrence was a great photographer and he covered most towns in Ireland and did a very good job. Royalty stayed at the hotel and that X marked the present location of the health centre. We're looking down Main Street towards Abbey Street. The chapter house. The church without its tower. That boat slip is still used. The original harbour used to be there. That's looking across the pier towards the lighthouse. When I came to Hoth, this was the entrance into Nashville Terrace. It was worthy of a postcard. The rune in Kilbarrick was famous for the bodies of washed up sailors and fishermen. They didn't know who they were, they were buried and they have a stranger's bank there. This particular building was demolished and rebuilt so that it could be seen clearly from the windows of Hoth Castle. This was an alternative design, equally beautiful, but what we have is lovely. I made a study of the old courthouse and this is a section through it. It used to be a church for Cornish fishermen. When the mail boat vacated the harbour, it became a very important fishing port. People from Scotland and indeed Cornwall, England, came and brought their boats there and landed their catches. When that photograph was taken, there's more coming from the chimney, so that cottage was lifted. I remember this building and this very fine replacement structure, very fine church. This building can be seen up a hill surrounded with trees. Here you can hardly see the church as it's blocked by trees. Again, before buildings came on either side of the meadows or so, 
this used to be the original Catholic Church and because the stone was delivered free Nashville Road and dropping it off the parish priest put those symbols to express his gratitude to those who walked in the quarry. That's a very beautiful lapse to the side of the church. It's like a medieval setting, sunken and surrounded with a stone wall. But it's proposed that should go and building a host communal facility. I think it's the wrong place. Another possibility is to build it in the yard behind the existing St. Columbanus Hall. Hoth was popular and people came from all over the world to stay there. Claremont was probably the most popular hotel, being as it was beside the sea. It's now fully developed. My daughter lived there for a while. The Strand Hotel, perhaps you don't recognize it, it's now the Marine Hotel, and it was called the Golfer's Hotel for a while. The Waverley Hotel up at the summit again was very popular. People arrived there by tram, but unfortunately in the early 20s it was burnt. A nice painted photograph, this became the subject of a postcard. These are the buildings that now adorn the site where the Waverley Hotel was situated. Back looking at the Royal Hotel. And the Abbey Tavern was also a hotel, people stayed there. And at the summit, it was a very popular watering place for people who came from the tram. It was destroyed by fire around 1920. It's possible that there was a cottage located where the future lighthouse was to be. This was built by Readings in 1667 by Royal Ascent of Charles II. Then it was replaced but this tower. This painting suggests a gas plant with chimney stacks in the background. It was never built. My drawing here shows all that was left of the old lighthouse and the remnants of both towers. This was a drawing when it was converted to a dwelling house. This is how it looked. It was active there with the chimney stack. When I came to Hoth in the 70s, it was in a state of disrepair. The roofs had fallen in. It's now lived in as a dwelling. That ship out to sea is of interest. Again, the lighthouse became the subject of a postcard and in misty conditions looked very magic. Very dramatic photograph this, well taken. There was a very torturous path winding its way down to the lighthouse. Here the lighthouse can be seen between rocks known as the needles or candlesticks. This is a plan looking straight down. And you can see there was a helipad. It, there was great excitement when a helicopter landed. Children from all the local estate would run up to see it. The buildings beside the lighthouse where the lighthouse keeper stayed with his family. Originally, King Griffin, mentioned earlier, had his fort here, and you have Dun Griffin Road or Dun Griffin. That's all for now, I hope you've enjoyed it. I could not have put this together without having read Hoth and its owners, Hoth Peninsula, and the Hoth through the eyes of the artist. They were great books, well worth buying. I also want to thank anyone whose photograph appeared in this little film. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it.